In the Middle Ages we were owned by kings and queens, earls and counts, barons and lords, tsars, dukes, duchesses, countesses, baronesses, archdukes, who had their knights and templars working as their police force for them to control the sheeple. Just as it is today, nothing has really changed. Or does anyone think they just disappeared like that? They were parasiting on the people and the workers who had to give taxes and percentage of wheat, vegetables and cattle. And many times the sheep starved to death in winter after a bad harvest. While these parasites and pharaohs were partying in the castle, drunk of the wine they had stolen, their bellies well fed with robbed food that should have been for all those hungry children. And they had their beds warmed up with young virgins of the sheeple due to the Prime Noctus, Droit de Cuissage, Droit du Seigneur or First Right. Allowing these parasites to grab the newly wed bride on the very night of her wedding to come and lay with the Lord and Master, thus spreading the pharaonic para genetics all over. Yes, the word pharaoh etymologically drew rise from two demotic words, per and a, meaning the big house. The big royal house of the pharaonic royal bloodline. As my dear friend William Morgan, 1776, so cleverly discovered that Genesis actually means the gene of Isis. And Geneva, in the octagon base, gene of Eve being one and the same one. I'm so glad my pupils are getting smarter than me, so I can retire soon. Just as the pharaohs never disappeared, the nobility never lost their power either. The word aristocracy is pharaonic. Aristocracy. A means big or pregnant, and ri means the sun, meaning those who come from the sun. Just as the Aryans, the Indo-Germanic nobility and upper class, Aryan is from Arion, as in aristocracy, which means that those who came from the sun with their blue blood and all their ruling, and they still do. Don't be mistaken. And here at this royal ball, well, we can see the pharaoh here. So, you know, that's where they came from. It's the same. That's just the same. And today, children disappear and they get raped, tortured, sacrificed and murdered in castles like Amerois in Belgium and Sotou in Luxembourg and many other places as the Bohemian Grove by very organized gangs like the Dutrou gang and by Fourniri, whose name indicates to deliver the king, Fourni Roi, with our children in this case. The nobility always were into Satanism and other dark mystical practices of their pharaonic ancestors as ritual child sacrifice. They always did, and they always will, protected by the knights, police, and authorities. In the 18th century, there was Marquis de Sade, where the word sadism actually comes from. So I don't have to tell you what his favorite pastime hobbies were about. Napoleon Bonaparte finally put him in prison for 10 years after his arrest in 1801 and he died in 1814. Prince Charles publicly admitted in 2011 that he's a descendant of the Prince of Wallachia or Vlad Dracul, the Impaler of Transylvania as we know him. 
He lived from 1431 till 1476 and its favourite hobbies were torture and impaling. Impaling means having implanted a stick up yours, coming up from the mouth and then set up in the ground vertically, being his interpretation of a crucifixion. Well, look at the eight-pointed star on his forehead. That's octogon. Right? Nobility. He did this to 100,000 people, mostly Saxons, and even the Ottoman Muslim army turned around and went back when they came to a forest of 20,000 impaled. From 1730 to 1801 we had the Russian nobility under the Tsar with Darya Nikolaevna Saltikova torturing and murdering at least 200 people. This is the nobility folks. They always did it and they never stopped doing it. From 1560 to 1614, Countess Erzebet Batori of the Hungarian nobility, also called the Blood Count Countess, tortured and murdered 650 virgins of the Shebor. Because she believed that bathing in a virgin's blood would keep her young forever, she and her fellow aristocrats even constructed an ingenious metal structure in which the victims could bleed to death, still being alive and sadistically tortured on the way. So this is the coat of arms of the royal Batori of the, uh, the blood counters. Ex-president Sarkozy of France comes from the Hungarian aristocracy being related to the blood counters as the pharaonic part Tsar in his name means king in Demotic. And this is the Blood Castle where she was imprisoned in 1610 only because the Sheeple started an uprising after 650 of their virgins disappeared. So it took the Sheeple 650 victims to act. How typical! The American shape will even need more. 3,000 victims sacrificed at 9-11 for another liquid and still counting. The Americans act big, martial and spartanic at the shooting range with the best goodies you can imagine, waiting though to be hauled up for the slaughterhouse without ever having used their goodies. And watch here, we can see the airplane going through concrete and steel and coming out on the other side intact, as if nothing has happened. Oh, they made a big mistake here. Baron Gilderay was an aristocratic French serial killer who lived from 1404 to 1440 who sodomized, tortured and murdered at least 600 boys and girls from the age of 6 to 18, together with his accomplices Poitou and Henri. He used to laugh seeing his victims dying while he opened up their stomachs, admiring their intestines, a thing he was fascinated with. And uh, look at this, this is his seal of his royal house of Duray and here we can see the uh, the Templars cross just on the Swiss army knife the same and this is just the tip of the iceberg because most cases are not known because the Schapel and stupid white race couldn't even read or write to document at all so the two parasites in society were and still are the aristocracy and the ecclesiastical orders of the priests of Amun, who never worked and always lived of the blood of others, in some cases even literally. Over the years and centuries these parasites grew fat, never hungered, having great parties with music and troubadour, and just reproducing like rabbits in between the parties. And all descendants wanted to be king or queen and have the castles. So wars broke out between them 
which the sheeple had to fight out. Nice haircut. Oh, what a legs. And what a nice shoes. And once a king, he wanted to stay king forever. And then even handed over to his pedigree. So rivalry started. And after hundreds of years, wars between the kingdoms and second son aristocracy, as the Templars, etc., they finally came together and decided to elect a king by the stupid sheeple for four years only. And so democracy started. And due to the increasing revolts, revolutions and uprisings of hungry peasants, the parasites of the nobility decided to go underground in Freemason lodges, divided in 33 degrees, indicating in fact the degree of pharaonic genes of the noble bloodlines in their veins. That's why Bernhard, the SS Prince of Darkness, founded the Bilderberger, who stand, due to their pure pharaonic blood, even over the usual 33 degrees of pharaonic percentage. It's like a bottle of whiskey, you know, like having 33 degrees of alcohol in it. And they have 33 degrees of pharaonic genetics. And don't think that Kate Middleton Cosima and the girls of the so-called civil marriages with the nobility don't have a certain degree of pharaonic bloodline in their veins. They all have. There are just so many of them nowadays hiding amongst us and all trying to get a key position with the authorities where they can parasite on humanity without working a single day. So the pharaohs never went away, they became the aristocracy and the nobility. And the nobility never lost power and they never really went away. They became, they rule through their politicians and Freemason lodges. So it's still the pharaohs ruling, I'm, I've been telling you for years. All the politicians are descendants of the nobility and aristocracy of the Middle Ages who went into hiding motors in Freemason lodges. That's why they want more and more police, because there are more and more of them who want to be a knight and do nothing. They protect child molesters and could stop drugs and prostitution within 24 hours, but it is them as well, earning money with organized crime at the expense of our children. Here you can see the drug dealers all hanging around in Bern next to the police station where they feel the most safe. I filmed this in 2011 with a mini DV so the quality is not that good. I would like to do it again but I can't go out uh, alone and especially in, in the evening or in the night. Uh, they're selling all these drugs to our children and the police are doing absolutely nothing. Instead of that, they terrorize me and my family and um, they terrorize innocent uh, defenseless families and come with a, uh, a terrorist police. Can you imagine? While well, they're doing nothing here. There they are. They're all, and, and later on they even aggressed us. Um, because I was, they, they, they saw I was filming. We had to get out very, very quickly. They came, you know. Uh, they hit on the car. I was with a guy, a German bloke. Next to the police station in Bern, they do nothing. It's them controlling the drugs trade. The authorities, the police, the politicians, it's them controlling the drugs trade, I tell you. And they want to get rid of kids who have a potential to, um, to think for themselves. This is why King Philip of France, Philippe le Bel, chased the Templars because they and their new system of democracy through Freemasonry endangered his heir to the throne and the ancient order of things that 
only the firstborn had a right to the throne and not the second, third or fourth son as the Templars were in fact. So burning the Templars by the French king was nothing else than it, as an a, uh, internal war between them. But now they've set it all aside and uh, recognizing that they have all the pharaonic uh, bloodline and um, I mean there's enough to share. Uh, and they found that Switzerland they are in peace now against us and the Templars needed a base where they speak all the important European languages so they founded Octagon Switzerland which is now the base of all pharaohs, politicians, Freemasons, um, drug trafficking and nobility who put aside their corruption money on a secret Swiss account and here we can see the UBS with the three sixes in it and the, uh, three, ti the three times the V symbol. And um, I told you, uh, they call it the beast. As you can see here, this is the beast. Just as they have the bear in the coat of arms in the capital of Octogon, um, UBS is the beast and they control the money. And they have the 666. See my other films. Even Kim Jong-un, North Korea's pharaoh, went to school in Switzerland, Liebefeld, 10 minutes away from where we live. Now why would a country that despises the West send their next pharaoh in the very heart of the very same West? He's a pharaoh. They can be Chinese, they can be black, they can be everything. And um, they, they all go to school in Switzerland. Well, the global elite rule the whole world and they all send their offspring to the pharaonic octogon to a boarding school for the elite where they get taught some more things as in a normal school for the sheeple. So here's Kim Jong in his uh, Swiss school uh, with Swiss children in, um, in Lieberfeld. There he is. He was in an international school before, and then he went to a normal school. Yeah. And if Jews say they will rule the world, this indicates that they don't rule yet. As simple as that. So they're not the ones we're looking for. As Christianity says the very same thing, that Christ will rule. And so say the Muslims, that Islam will rule the world. They all claim the very same thing. What a funny bunch our real pharaonic masters and rulers might think. And in the 1920s the German people were starving. So they founded the NSDAP which was a workers party for and by the people. Which was very soon infiltrated by the nobility and Hitler turning the NSDAP a workers party into a aristocratic led gang where their members carried the von word in their names. The official turning point was 1934, the night of the long knives, where the last delegates of the workers and the German people were murdered by the pharaohs and their nobility. So you understand that Graf von Stauffenberg never put a bomb on the Hitler's table. He just betrayed the movement of July the 20th, where real German officers wanted to finish the Nazi dictatorship over their people. I mean, if they would have wanted to kill Mr. Hitler, they could have done it easily, but it just needed a sacrifice. Uh, on the right-hand side is his... Um, his mother-in-law, born Freyin von Stackelberg. Freyin, that means he was free and not a slave as the sheeple. And her name was, when she, after she married, Freifrau Anna von Leichenfeld. Freifrau, that means she's a free woman. Well, that says it all, doesn't it? So on the, on the left-hand side, we can see... Um, So here we can see um, Stauffenberg with his uh, with his wife, 
funny enough she looks like uh, like Merkel. Who knows? It's all the same bloodline anyway. So and this is the mother of uh, Stauffenberg's wife. Well, I mean that, that that is not German. This is not German. This is pharaonic. This is pharaonic. And look at the long pharaonic hands. Look at it, like Obama. And here, oh, Fleur de Lis. That's the Lotus of the Nile. They're all pharaohs. So people should organize in four men groups only because everything gets infiltrated. I mean, look at what they did in Auschwitz and the other concentration camps. This is the same kind of satanic, sadistic cruelty as the nobility always did to the Europeans and all other peoples of the world. It's them all right, the pharaohs and their octagon base in the mountains. And look, they even, the nobility in power, they even brought back one of their favorite instruments of torture. Waterboarding. It already existed in the Middle Ages. Look at it. It came back. It's them all right. They did it then. And they still do it today. The Americans fought against the British Crown, who then set up the Americans against each other, and then took over power again through secret Freemason lodges of the very same aristoc aristocracy as that crown they fought before, now smiling and telling everyone what he or she wants to hear. There's nothing left of the freedom they fought for. Nothing. The nobility and the crown is ruling again. They set the Americans up against each other through the, uh, the Civil War. And then they took power again. Divide and rule. Now, just as, as they want to put up Islam against the Americans, it's still the same thing. Divide and rule. Uh, it was all for nothing. I've seen with my own eyes and I heard it with my own ears how the Swiss police and the Justice Department of Nazi Switzerland lie. Where these Swiss Nazis just invent things so they can terrorize me and my family over a period of a long 16 years. They lie. These authorities of the pharaonic aristocracy, they lie about 9-11. They lie about World War II and they lie about these two Chechen kids who love the US. This is the enemy of mankind, the same pharaonic aristocracy and their Freemason lodges, their politicians and judiciary and their same knights in the police and octagon army. And if humanity will not learn to unite very soon, Mankind and the whole earth will lose as a whole. Like in the Middle Ages, they still are our masters and owners. And they own us by forcing us to have a number and show them identification, proving they own us. Just like cattle having a number punched in the ear or under the skin somewhere. This is where the aristocracy, the kings and queens and nobility, they dreamt of in the Middle Ages. And now they perfectly have it. They just have to conceal it from us, or not even that. There are no more valors where families live in poverty and a man can marry another man. And even adopt a baby, as they voted in France like three weeks ago. Being not the product of their unholy union. They can't reproduce themselves, but still, there are more and more of them. Well, that's no wonder when defenseless babies have to grow up with them. Once they came along with great armies as masons and built roads, aqueducts and castles. And now they still call themselves masons. Though the real work being done by their sheeple, so they're free with their masons. This is Castel del Monte 
in an octagonal shape. This is octagon with the triangle of the masons at the entrance. They videotape us everywhere as a shepherd keeping an eye on his cattle and we have to carry documents with a picture on it to show the ownership by them owning us. The aristocracy owns us just as in the Middle Ages. 30 million Russians starved to death due to this aristocratic parasite called the Tsars, leading to uprisings and revolutions, just as elsewhere. So the aristocracy had to hide in secrecy. So this means they are afraid of us, very, very afraid. And maybe we still have a tiny little chance left. See the Pharaoh show for more. And see Octagon the Empire of Darkness for more.